look at that excellent so now we're going to get the next brick squeeze against brick one hold the brick one tight if you have to there look at that look at the thumb working look at the thumb working in look at the way i'm looking down the wall i'm maintaining that level i'm maintaining the plumb good excellent well done so now we're going to check it for level Brilliant, I'm glad she's done that because she's a little bit high this end. So all I'm going to do is turn the trail, use the butt of the trail, and I'm just going to force a couple of mil down, and she's there. Right, now, what we had, <laughs> we know she's level there, now we need to plumb, okay? So we need to go upright. This is important, please. Please remember, take your time. So, let's have a look. Beautiful. So we know plumbing point one is plumb. Plumbing point two is plumb. So now we need to put the straight edge through and gently guide the rest in. Now, please remember, I've made that look quite easy and it's not, it's ever so hard, okay? Take your time. Plumbing point one, plumbing point two. Straight edge through. So I know she's little. What have we got here? Half a brick to go in, okay? And that helps us keep bond. So the half goes in, so the one hour going over the top will maintain the bond, the perpendiculars go up. So, guys, listen, I'll use my trowel. Hold the brick with your thumb hand there. We're going to cut with the trowel there. Jump. Okay? Now, if you have to, use your hammer and bolster. Okay? I'm only showing you this again. Technically, another technique for you to use. So, again, watch. One, two, three, four. Okay? And then we're going to push her straight in. Beautiful. Now, notice the thumb working. The eyes working. Look at the body pushing in. Now, excess muck. Watch. We're going to go across to using again the top quarter. Now, because of the perk, watch what I do. I'm going to go across, then up. And remove the mortar. Hold the trowel loosely. Hold the bat, watch. One, two. Start it down. Okay? Beautiful. Beautiful. So let's get this nice course on. Again, we're going to break this roll in that muck. Again, look at the body. Look at the feet. Look at the way I'm leaning. Look at the way I'm technically going in. Look at the way I'm leaning in and I pull the back. Beautiful. Edge of the trail, like we said. Through. Yep, yeah, here comes the scrape. Now watch this importantly, stale that bit of muck. What's the point in putting it on the board and picking it up again? Stale it on your trail, pick your next brick up. One, two, three. Good, excellent. Now again, leaning, leaning over the top of the brick, sighting the brick in, look at the thumb and finger working. I've got, I'm gonna show you now, Harris to Harris. You can see that detail. And now the thumb's gonna bring the top of the brick over top of the brick over excess mark can go back on the perp good and again the way I pick the brick up my thumb show the starting bricks so that doesn't move back gently squeeze the rim look at the thumb and finger the thumb and finger are working ever so hard Harris to Harris there up the perp beautiful good excellent good let's check it for level Spot on. Spot on. Plumbing point one and two. Good. Straight edge through. Excellent. Good. Now, my next point is now we're going to go diagonally. We're going to go from the top of A down to the bottom of B. So we're going to run the level across there just to make sure the whole face of the work is doing what it should be doing. Okay, this is the third plumbing point. That's important, the third plumbing point. Now, going back to the early stages, 
do you remember the gauge we said? 75, check every course. Now I'm hoping this is gonna be slightly wrong to, so we have another lesson we can show in this. Right, so we should be four course, so four times 75 mil, 300 mil. I'm 301 mil. Good. So I'm one mil high. I'm sure they might have got to let me get away with that. Right. So now what we have to do is build the same corner down the other end. Okay. And keep it to gauge. Keep plumbing points one, two, three the same. And that's our starting profile. So what you see me do at start was break the brick with the trowel, okay, which is a, um, a technique that comes in time and experience. As a beginner, I suggest you use a hammer and bolster, okay. So I'm going to start from the very raw beginning. We're going to measure the brick. We know it's 215, so half of 215 is 107.5, so if we mark it there, good. Scar the brick, and then what I'm going to do cleverly is I'm going to put the mark on the outside, so the mark of the brick goes down to the brick below. That's gonna help force the wedge, and the science is gonna break the brick into half. So, there, give her a scar. Now these bricks tend to shatter quite a bit. So if we're gonna just, one, two. Now listen, I've made that look easy, and I will tell you now it's not. So don't be surprised if you've got seven or eight bricks wastage on the floor okay it happens Good, so the other corner is now up. Now watch please. This is what we call the excess muck. Now in slang brickland term snots. Okay, make sure you clear it. So evidently yeah, because it goes off ever so quick. Now if you're ready to point, use it for pointing. Okay, if not, always clear at the end of the day your snot's off so it's clear the next day off when you start laying notice i've done this side already so i'm going to run a line because we know point a to point b is level we put a line up and we can just lay to the line so lay to the line as much as you can now this is what you call a corner block now this is an amazing invention we just push it through there and we're going to push and that will hold on there Continue the line out. There, and then again, we're going to just wrap it through so she's nice and tight and secure. The old saying, tight lines, tight lines. It's important you have tight lines because you're laying to the measurement of the line, okay, the accuracy of the line. So it's important that your line is tight. Now, I like to always put a brick down just to secure the line, okay just to secure the line. Now I've got a lovely bit of gear on here. So again, I'm rolling the muck. The right, the appropriate amount, not too much, because watch what happens, watch. If I put too much down, and I've not gauged that, when I put the brick down, watch, now watch how hard I've got to work, watch. Push it down with the hand, I'm getting me trowel, watch. It all falls down the floor, makes a mess. You're doing this and you smear the brick and, your foot well trapped is all messy. And then what happens, tends to happen, is anxiety kicks in. Then you get stressed and you start getting the ump, you're not throwing your trouble and going back inside. So, start off with the micro techniques. Remember what I said, make sure it's nice and efficient. Get used to rolling your muck. There, sharp, issue comes in. Beautiful. Top court with a trowel. Look at the way I spread. Look at the way I'm leaning back and forwards with my right knee. There, in she goes, good, so one, two, three, four, 
and we've got that third pond there which is already made what I've done earlier. So this is where it gets important. Remember the Harris, what's the fun? Watch, Harris to Harris, I'm going to scratch that so you see. Harris to Harris, Harris to Harris, now the thumb, Harris to line. One, two, three, four. Harris to Harris, Harris to line. Ready? Look at the thumb, look at the thumb, Harris to Harris. Look at that, Harris to Harris. Now bring the thumb, Harris to line. Good. Scrape the excess off. Excellent. That's what I wanted to happen. Good. Now, brilliant. I'm glad that's happened. It's tight. The one brick is not fitting. Okay? So what does that mean? Good. Right, that means either I've gone too big on the perps, or I've not started on my lines. Now, I know I started on my lines, but what I've done on purpose, look at this joint here. That's bigger than 10 mil. Okay? So I've gone bigger than 10 mil there, so now I've affected and compromised the aesthetically look of the wall. So it's not a problem. Brilliant. Good. Good. So what's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Yeah, I've gone 20 mil there. So what we need to do is edge that back. So, a common mistake. What happens? Brilliant. Good. So we tap her back to 10 mil. Okay. I'm okay there. Beautiful. Might have a little help out. Good. So. And now she should go straight in. Beautiful. Look at that. Like a glove. Full perps. Cool. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do now, watch. Brick one up. Brick two up. Elevate the line to the top of the brick. Elevate the line this side. And we're ready to go again. You've noticed I've spread enough bed for five or six bricks. Now remember, I'm trying, it's hard for me because I'm trying to slow it down and create problems of learning. But my advice is only spread muck for two bricks at a time while you're starting off. Because the bricks suck the moisture out of the damp, it goes off and you'll be forever trying to whack the brick down. So again, with that small shell of yours, just two bricks at a time, good. What I want to do now is teach you something about knowledge, okay, the paperwork side. So, two fundamental parts of building a garden, okay, is damp, the weather, okay, rain. So from the foundation, okay, we need to stop that water rising up the wall. So it's common to use a semi-engineering, okay, a blue, a blue semi-engineering. Then these are built with different materials, okay. Ceramic. So when it goes in the water, doesn't the brick doesn't absorb the water? Okay, it smears it off. So any water rising, it will stop. In other words, like a damp coursing. Okay, but we don't put damp coursing on garden walls because it makes a weak point. Okay, so we use engineerings. So always put two cores of engineerings. They have to be two cores showing above ground level. So on here, this is my ground level, two cores above. So I would have two cores of blues. This would stop any water penetrating up your wall. Now the next point would be the rain coming down the top of the wall. Now aesthetically I could finish a nice capping with the same brick, 
but the lifespan on these bricks with the weather coming down onto it is going to expose the mortar okay it's going to weaken it so you're probably going to get 10 years if you're lucky okay which is fine if you like that you know so i've done jobs with people where clients want the same brick and they just say dean in 10 years come back and redo it anyway so we're going to cap off with a solid blue engineering okay notice this no perforated holes, no frogs, so when the rainwater comes down, it just comes off and bounces off. Now that's going to protect the top of the wall. With two coats of these at the bottom, it's going to protect the bottom of the wall. So then the last span of your wall is probably going to go for about 60, 70 plus years, depending on how well the foundation is. Now go back to Victorian times, and it's common to see boundary walls, garden walls, with a roof tile as a coping. Okay, And that was the reason. They got it right. You know, we seem to change things in between and it's good for us because we keep getting work. But notice them walls have stayed up for over 100 years. So think about that, the science of it. Okay, good. So now we're going to run these blues in. Now I'm using a different brick, a different material. These, I'm going to get the underside. Just look at this closely. Just watch this. As you come up, any mortar on there, I'm going to try and do it wrong. It's called smears. Smears smear so you could be just perping the brick up see the little smear there so it's so hard brick to lay so don't avoid them work with them learn to lay bricks now what i've done was as a youngster i took 20 30 bricks on when i could become consistent with those 20 30 bricks i went and got another brick 20 30 then, then another so then before I knew it, in time I was consistent with all different brands of bricks. So whatever job I went on, whatever job I in, whatever brick I used, I become quite consistent. So, I'm going to lay these and I'm going to give a tip at the end what to do with them. Okay, so let's get these laid. Right, so if we stand back and we have a look at the wall, aesthetically we need to look at it. Right, notice I've got a couple of empty perps where we opened them up earlier. Don't worry about that. They will point through. They will point through. Okay, it happens. But your objective as a good bricklayer is to keep full joints, like I've done down this end of the wall. Purposely done several mistakes here for you to learn from, common mistakes you will find as a learner. Okay, and that's good. So, listen. We need to let that go off before we point it. So that's a great time for me to grab a bacon sandwich and a cup of tea. Right, now, while I was having a little break, we obviously let the mortar go off because we want to now point her up. Now, we don't want to point the wall too wet because it smears the work and we don't want to point it too dry because it makes it harder work. Now, the muck doesn't want to be the same mortar as you've been using. We need it to be dry. So, evidently, what you want, a, when you notice when I was building the work, I left the mortar axis on the back of the wall. So, all I'm going to do is scrape the back of the wall, and I've got a nice bit of dry mortar. The moisture's gone out of that a little bit, so that's good to point. Okay, so I'm going to put it on there. Right, now I'm going to use the first jointer, the ironing tool, the marshal tan, okay? What I'm going to do is get the muck, remember when I stowed it, just as I was purping it, so there, and I'm going to stout, okay? Now, I need to get the underside of this, this pointer, this jointer there, and as I push in, I boost the trail up. So there, up, so it stays. Again, push the, the jointer right into the trail, so you feel it touch the trail, and up. Okay, again, there. Otherwise, if you don't push the trail up, sometimes it stays, the majority of the time it goes off. So, it's there. Again, from the hips, not there okay relax just relax so there okay good how we start pointing we always start with the perps okay the perps the perpendiculars so what we're going to do is start at the top and just slightly push through now remember i've done two examples earlier of full joints and empty joints now because my joints are full watch i don't need mortar on it i can just drag that straight through there 
a good brick layer will have full joints so we can just pull through. Now with the empty joints, now I've got to get the muck in and pull it. So don't worry if you start off doing that at first, it's completely fine. So we're going to go along and just pull the joint. Now I need to do the bed joints, okay? So the bed joints, I'm going to use this part of the jointer. The bottom end and then pull it through there. So we start with the bottom end and pull it through there. So on point of contact, the bottom end comes in. I don't push too hard and as I pull, I gently even it up. So gently apply, gently apply the front. Now again, please watch my legs. It's not a, there, we want to pull in one, so there and then back through there okay so again you've got a little hole here so again there and then pull back through push see the gap between the top of the joint and the mortar on the way back through watch the top of the joint makes contact and we pull it through good so again bottom half back top half so i'm just going to fill the hole there what i've got which happens Again, bottom half, top half, okay? Now, as you can see, you can see some of the mortar accessing up because we've pulled it and now we've pushed the bottom and pushed the top. So this is called head and toweling. So now I need to head and tail. So go through the perp again. Go through the perp again because we don't want those head and tails popping up through the work, okay? So now I'm going to use my timber joint, this old traditional method. Now what this does, this absorbs the moisture out of the muck, so it makes it easy to point. Aesthetically, it gives it a rougher look. So if you're using the rougher brick, an old rustic brick, it looks better to join up with a bit of timber. So all I've done is carve this myself, cut a bit of wood down, rub it against the concrete to create the shape of what you want. So again, what we're going to do in here is push through. Like this I'm pulling from the top down. Pull it from the top down. Excellent. So now we're going to do the bed joint, which is the same. Again, we're going to just pull it through. Pull it through. Pull it through. So again, head and tail. Pull it through. Pull it through. Get rid of the tops and bottoms. Good. Pull it through. Pull it through. Pull it through. When we use a timber, we're using a, a rusticy brick to bring out the contour of the shape of the brick. We don't want sharp, steady, consistent lines on an old rusticy look, looking brick. Okay. So again, practice. Do half the panel in a neat jointer, half the point with a bit of wood, and gain that, that that terminology, that experience up. So you're you're able to lay two different types of brick, and that's important. So. Looking at my decision would be to go with the Marshall Town jointer on these bricks because they are quite consistent and it looks a little bit more neater and consistent than the pull of the timber. So what we need to do now is to let the work go off before we brush. So why we let it go off? Let's check the level. That's the important part. Okay, we know she's level. Okay, and then if you put the work up there. Good, we know she's level there. So the wall now, point A, point B is level. Plum, sorry, point A and B is plumb. We know she's level. So then we do the, the, the check, the wallpaper check, I call it. All the bricks are touching as we go on that diagonal line. So remember at the start of the video, points A, B and C are important. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush up. This gets all the blemishes off all the blemishes off okay so that's important this is what i was saying earlier about using a nice soft brush now when you brush circular movements circular movements you don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to be removing water from the bed joints or perps you just want to be doing light nice and light gentle circular movements so again for me importantly is the step forward is that yeah nice circular movements nice circular movements Nice circle. Nice circle.
Good. Excellent. Right. So what we've got here is the case of because the mortar's a little bit too wet to point, okay, you've got what we call brush marks in. That's not a problem. All you do is generally you do this anyway, you go over it, okay? You give it another point through. A gentle one. So all it is is another gent through. A gentle pull through, removing in brush marks. Good. Now what you'll find, remember, we was using lime. Lime doesn't go off, okay? So pointing's always gonna be hard. When you get on sand and cement, it actually goes off. The more it should get absorbed. So you're always gonna look aesthetically not as good as sand and cement, okay? Now that'll dry overnight, leave it up, you know, come out and look at it again later on. Pick the bits you're not happy with, look at the wall, learn from it, okay? And then take it down the next day, and then we go again. <laughs> and that's what it's about, you know, with the good thing about today is, if you've got this on your iPad or your phone, you can set your phone up or your iPad, put it up and you can just watch yourself and, or watch me and listen to it time and time again wherever you are in the world, okay? And that's important. Okay, guys, um, the cost of materials to do this, you're probably looking at about 80, 90 pounds, a small price to pay for you to practice at home. I mean, what's that? Two Chinese these days, isn't it? So, um, I know what I'd rather be doing. Land bricks than eating Chinese. Listen, God bless. Thank you for watching. See you later.